So um, I'm going to talk now about the uh, sixth clip of the interview with uh, Reb Zalm Schechter in uh, 2010 when he was 85 years old. So this is uh, the sixth clip. So in the beginning he tells the story of uh, him taking the typewriter. He made, he got, he was asked by the Moshe Pinchas Katz to do something in the office of the yeshiva, which is across 770. And he uh, made a duplicate key so that he can use the typewriter in the office to copy my morim. In this case, it was Hecholzu, um, the Rebbe Rashab. And he tells the story how um, it, 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 the, the typewriter fell down, and he broke the carriage, and, and uh, they called him in to the office, one of the uh, dormitory bacharim in that building. The offices were in, also there was a dormitory for the yeshiva. You know, uh, basically squealed on him, informed on him. It was he who broke into the office, um, and uh, they gave him a knas, to Rashag, Rav Shmuel, Rav Jacobson, Rav Mentlik, uh, one other person. They gave him a knas of uh, thirty-five dollars, and he uh, paid it off slowly. It was a lot, a lot of money, <laughs> but this is interesting because um, you see that he, you know, he was the one to, to to do this for Rabbi Katz. In other words, he, this is the way I see it. The fact that he slept in 770 and opened the doors of 770, he was like uh, kind of a gopher for things that they needed in the yeshiva at certain times. So although he was very immersed in his learning and his davening, but they could quickly call on him to do something because he lived right, he, he was right there. And uh, you also see that he... Uh, as we say, at Farshtanen an Inyan, he, he got it, you know, if he needed to make a duplicate key to be able to type my modem, uh, kind of, you know, because in those days things were not around, they weren't publishing, and, and it was uh, Yikara Matsias, it was very precious, so he did what he, he, did what he had to do. Uh, that's a, a very uh, telling insight into who he was. Um, in Yiddish there's an expression, there's Nishkivenki Farshlofener, you know, he wasn't a sleepyhead, he uh, he was with it. He he figured it out pretty quickly what needs to be done. And uh, for Chassidus and Chassidushkeit, I mean, that's why he, he wanted the Maimara. Then he talks about uh, Rabbi Garari. I ask him, you know, uh, because he imitates his, his voice and his facial uh, gesture in, indicates the way the Rashag, Rabbi Garari, spoke. And I ask him about the Rashag. And from there we get to talk about the whole transition period of Tafshin Yud, 1950, and we're coming up now to Yud Shvat, you know, uh, who should be the Rebbe and all that. And for the various things that Zalman says, he says it was very clear, there's no, uh, there's no Shiloh, there's no question who should be the Rebbe, you know. He, he brought some stories to support that, uh, the story with the, by the Tahara, which I found interesting. He says that the main person doing the Tahara was the Shamish, uh, of the Hever Kadisha, who was a Chaim Berlin uh, person. Uh, Chaim Berlin wasn't exactly, uh, you know, um, the Lubavitch Yeshiva, to put it mildly. I wrote about that in my book, um, you know, uh, Rabbi Hutner and Rebbe. So, but he was, he, he says, almost says he was in charge kind of of the, of the Tara of the previous Kazeb's uh, holy, holy goof, holy uh, uh, goof kachay. And so he, he would come out of the room and have some questions. So who would he turn to to ask his questions of halacha and, and, and minig and custom was the Rebbe, the Ramash. He, although Zalman was standing right there saying till him, with the Ramash saying till him, the Rebbe saying till him, and, and the Rebbe Gerari, the Rashag, he didn't ask the Rashag, even though he was older. So Zalman says he, he saw right away and understood that this is uh, the future Rebbe is right here, the Ramash. He also says that um, the, uh, his wife, uh, when she was pregnant, she had a dream, and the Rebbe came to her and uh, said, you know, that uh, the Rebbe, the Ramash, you know, he will be my continuation, and, and, and she um, woke up and was crying and was very over moved by it. It's interesting that Salmas shares that, uh, you know, kind of intimate moment in his personal life, but he brings that as proof to, 
to the question that I asked, the answer, the question that that uh, it was very obvious. And then he says a line in, in the middle of this uh, clip number six. He says uh, the difference between them was was great. Uh, it's not the exact words he uses, but and he shakes his head, you know, makes a, a facial gesture, implying like, come on, you know, it's it's like, you know, night and day as far as who should be the next Rebbe. So these are very interesting things. He says another thing that I never heard, that the Rebbe in the beginning with the Ramash, when he davened, he covered his 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 hat with his talus because he didn't want people to see that he's wearing, you know, more than one set of tefillin because the Rebbe put on the four pairs of tefillin. Um, that I never heard, that he did it that way, so that was very interesting. In general, what I walk away with from this clip is, um, oh, he says another thing I, that... When he was sometimes in Yechidus, the Friedrich Rebbe said, so what did my son-in-law the Ramash say? And he said, over, and he said, uh, 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 you know, like, um, well, Zalman says he, the interpretation of that uh, 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 means uh, you didn't exactly understand it this way, exactly. I don't know if that was the shot, you know, I don't know if that's the meaning, and uh, whatever it meant, it meant. But one thing we, we take away from this uh, is that um, he was like, uh, he was able to, he had these yichidus, and again, it, I'm not I'm not saying it was every day and every week and every month, but how many other uh, Bacharim 770 during those days had um, such uh, occur, you know yichidus in, and then and, and were able talking to the to the previous Rebbe about the son-in-law about the Ramash. I mean, that's an amazing thing. So. Um, I think there's a lot of very, very important short things in, in, in this segment that we need to focus on.